Hi, welcome to Well-Traveled Life here with Jonathan and Jennifer. And today we're going to talk about uh, some time we spent around Inverness, Scotland. Yeah. So we were up in the Highlands and it is such a beautiful area. The city of Inverness is great, but just outside the city limits, you've got a ton of history and it's all really close together. So yeah. we went to a number of different places. Including the Culloden Battlefield, the Clava Cairns, and the Cawdor Castle. And as a history buff, if you watched our slow food uh, video with uh, Corinne, you heard me talk a little bit about the Battle of uh, Culloden which was a pretty significant battle involving uh, Bonnie Prince Charles, who was in line, I think, with the Stuart line of uh, kings. He'd been living in France, and he came back to try to seize the throne. He landed in Scotland, uh, hoped to rally troops to his cause. He had some initial success, and it was a little bit of a campaign against some smaller uh, British or English forces. But at the uh, Battle of uh, Culloden, he finally met his match, and uh, the uh, forces of Body Prince Charles, the, I guess the rebel army, if you will, were defeated by the British there. And we had learned a little bit from our dinner with Karen about the battlefield, and so we had a chance to visit it, and it's a very well-preserved site, very well marked. There's a, a nice museum there, several buildings from that period. Uh, gravestones, headstones, markers in the field showing where many uh, elements of the battle took place, including the final unsuccessful charge by the forces under Bonnie Prince Charles. We are at the site of the Culloden Battlefield, where the last pitched battle on British soil was fought in April of 1746. At that time, the surviving members of the Scottish royal family with the Stuart family, and they were led by Bonnie Prince Charles. He landed in Scotland, came to Scotland, and raised an army. They're called the Jacobites. And at this battlefield, they met the government troops. A thousand uh, Jacobite troops met, or 5,500 maybe, met about 8,000 government troops. And in a long battle, uh, the Jacobites were defeated. And in fact, uh, of about 1,600 dead that day, 1,500 of them were Jacobites. Uh, so uh, with that defeat, the British government uh, survived here. tour the battlefield, they show you where some of the mass grave sites are. It's a, again, most of those were Jacobites. Near the end of the Jacobite line, there was a thatched uh, building that was used as a field hospital during the battle. That's been destroyed, but it's been rebuilt as a thatched roof stone building. And uh, you can go inside and see what that looked like at the time. trust that operates this uh, is trying to keep the battlefield looking much as it did in 1746. It was just farming. There were cattle out here and they brought in cattle and goats to the, on the battlefield to kind of show the, you know, the original kind of cattle that would have been here, Scottish Midland.
this is a time in history where uh, the soldiers' infantry are fighting with muskets, over 8,000 versus 5,500 regular troops, better arms, probably more artillery. Body Prince Charles, he was trying to rally the troops, but uh, he didn't join an established army. They were kind of a militia, a people that were opposed to English rule here, and they were um, what most people would describe, I think, as irregular troops. So they're less well-armed, less well-trained, less heavy weapons like artillery, and uh, you know, they were passionate, but uh, uh, they were fighting in a difficult situation. Cafe and the visitor center have opening and closing hours, but the battlefield itself is open year round and visitors are welcome. They do ask that you be respectful as this is a burial ground. This is very close to Inverness and uh, it's just, that battlefield is just one of many things we would encourage you to explore in that area really close by and it's almost like there's a little history trail right there. You have the Clava Cairns and that's a more ancient historic marker. If you are a fan of Outlander and the stone circles, uh, this would be a place to go visit. I'm not sure I knew that. Yeah. It's featured in the books of the show. It's time travel and Claire goes through the stone circles to get in and out of different time periods. They are rock tombs, actually been used and reused over hundreds, uh, I guess more, more than a thousand years. So they were originally built by one group of people and then later on a much later group again used them as burial sites for the, some of their leaders and things like that. So you're able to go through this site and they have three or four very well preserved stone cards which just look like a, kind of like a stone igloo, if you will. They have an entrance way and inside they would have been decorated as tombs. And so you can hike through these. There are signs sort of identifying the different periods and the different groups that use them. And really, I, I thought I found that really neat. of the Clava Cards, which are three Neolithic grave sites. There are three distinct burial sites here dating from about the same period of time and radioactive carbon dating of some of the wood and charcoal found at the site suggests that these were built maybe around 2000 BC, but that the site itself uh, has been occupied for much longer than that. They found charcoal and other uh, fragments that suggest that people have been living here for much longer than that. The three primary rings are, are built at the same time about 2,000 years ago. Two of them are designed, they had a covered roof and you would walk inside them with a passageway. The third is just a ring. And they're not sure if it was ever occupied inside. They think it may have been a temple. The two main uh, rings that, that you walk into, the doors are lined with the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year, so December 21st or uh, whatever that works out to. And, and it shows that the time of people living here who were farmers and uh, 
So uh, this would be kind of a scary time of year. Maybe the, the stones are just kind of a uniform gray, different size and texture, but uh, kind of a uniform gray. But, but archaeologists suggest that when those rocks were first put in place, they would have had colors and those colors would have been meaningful as to the direction that they were facing and what it is that they were protecting. So, I mean, it's a beautiful area. And that's not all. There are castles in the area as well. And we stopped by Cotter Castle. With Cotter Castle, you can do a tour of the gardens or you can do a tour of the interior of the castle. And there were three of us uh, that day. Tammy was traveling with us, you know, for, those, for three weeks. And, and that's the first time she'd really ever had a chance to go to a castle. Certainly her first visit to England or Scotland. Jennifer and I have been to many castles. This is a very well preserved and I would say rehabbed castle, mm -hmm. family owned. Mm -hmm. And so we, we chose not to go inside the castle because we've probably seen several things like that. But the gardens and the grounds there were really amazing. So for still a fee, I think we yeah. paid something to go into that, but the gardens, uh, and some outlying buildings on the grounds were really impressive to us and I enjoyed that tour. So as we divided forces and Tammy went inside, she shared pictures with us so you'll get to see the interior of the castle thanks to Tammy. If you've watched Downton Abbey, then you know that keeping up with these houses is just almost impossible. So that's why many of them have become museums. You may recognize the name Cotter from Shakespeare's Macbeth. While there are some loose affiliations, the castle actually did not even exist when Shakespeare wrote that play. In 1310, William II was given the thanage of Cawdor from Robert the Bruce. And in 1370, construction began on the central tower of the castle. Legend has it that when deciding where to build the castle, he loaded his donkey with gold, set the donkey free, and the donkey lay down underneath a thorned holly tree. And that's where the castle was built. That thorned holly tree died in the 1300s, which has helped to date the castle. In the 1400s, William VII is given permanent hereditary sheriffship and is the keeper of the castle. But the 1500s are marked by the kidnapping of the heiress daughter, the sudden death of the heired son, and a number of murders within the Cotter family. In the 1600s, the heiress Muriel married a Campbell and it has stayed in Campbell hands ever since. By the 1800s, the Campbells of Cotter have become the largest land-owning family in Scotland and there's substantial renovation and additions to the castle, especially after a fire had destroyed one entire wing. The Dowager Countess Angelica, who was born the Countess Lazonsky from Bohemia, is the second wife and widow of Sir John Campbell V, the Earl of Cawdor. He has passed away and she continues to live at the castle, mostly in the wintertime when fewer tourists are there. The house is seen as she lives in it, which makes it a little less a museum and more a real home. But all of those Shakespearean family dramas aren't over yet. In 2001, it was reported that the Countess had prevented her stepson from sowing genetically modified rapeseed on the Cotter estate. And in 2002, the Countess took him to court after he moved into the castle while she was away. Then we did some photography outside of the castle and the gardens. You have formal planned gardens, you have some wild areas, there's a riparian river wetland area, lots of different sculptures. I think 
one thing to recognize, and this is super true in England, but is true in, in parts of Scotland as well. The castles, if they're charging you an entrance fee, they've done a really good job of making sure you can't see the castle until you pay that fee and get through the gate. Yeah. We were able to see the exterior of the castle once we had paid our fee and gotten up to the castle grounds and we could go to the gardens. But if you were just hoping to drive by and catch a glimpse, that's probably not gonna happen. Anyway, very in trouble. Where do we go from here? Well, so what's really fun is after we go visit a castle, we're gonna go stay in a castle. So our next video will uh, feature in the castle that we stayed in that night. So thank you. And we hope you enjoy this video and we'll see you on our next one. Culloden? I don't know. Somebody Culloden. from Scotland, could you please give us the proper pronunciation yeah. there?